I thought we'd be doing a discussion this evening looking at the exploding pages in Lebanon yesterday and Israel's possible uh, involvement in this in a new type of warfare in which several people have lost their lives. But the big news coming out of Lebanon as we speak is that there are walkie-talkies which are now exploding. This footage from yesterday. But uh, what I'm talking about right now are walkie-talkies which have started exploding. Is uh, Lebanese sources indicating that nine people have dead, 300 are injured. Joining us to discuss not just what happened yesterday, which you can see in these images, but also the situation today right now. Uh, John Rosamondo is a commentator on U.S. national security. Glenn Carl, who's been um, uh, a career CIA officer in Sakit Modi, who looks very closely at cyber security. John Rosamondo, what are the implications of what's happening right now as we speak, day two of these presumably Israeli attacks? Well, I think there is a sending a message to Hezbollah that uh, the Israelis uh, have managed to penetrate their ranks to the point that they were able to put these devices in the hands of Hezbollah operatives and to uh, you know, give a very strong psychological uh, terror to them that uh, they're being watched. And uh, the Israelis can strike at will and you know, not knowing where these are coming from and uh, you know, when they'll strike has a very strong fear component to it. Um, Glenn Carl, in just the last few minutes, the Hezbollah Deputy Secretary General says, and I quote, a unique and bloody vengeance will follow. Are we entering perhaps the most volatile part of this war in West Asia? I'm afraid the answer is yes. Uh, the spiral continues. It's a little, un a little. it's unclear to me um, what the Israelis are um, actually trying to achieve. Tactically, this was a, a brilliant intelligence operation that's very impressive. But Hezbollah knew that Mossad and other uh, Israeli services were very impressive already. Um, the Israeli government has announced that war with the Lebanon, with Hezbollah, uh, is coming and that Lebanese should prepare um, now, you could interpret that as a, a warning to try to de-escalate uh, matters, but uh, as this occurs, this, um, these explosions occur, uh, it's hard to see how that will, uh, to me, uh, long-term dissuade uh, Hezbollah. Uh, Short-term it may, uh, but I fail to see um, a particularly wise strategy involved in this tactical operation. It's, it's hard to explain. Uh, something that can only make uh, matters more tense. And, you know, I mean, it's not just uh, alleged Hezbollah fighters who are losing their lives, children as well, families being affected in this. So it's, it's mm -hmm. indiscriminate in the, in the way in which, uh, you know, people have been targeted is what a lot of people suggest. But, Sakit Modi, let me come to you next. How is this even possible? Um, is it because Israel infiltrated possibly the supply chain of those pages and presumably these walkie-talkies as well, inserted explosives and, and then there's a code being sent out. What is the technology behind this? Certainly. Uh, firstly, Vishnu, wonderful to be on your show. Uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, the big pager was under a brand <laughs> called Gold Apollo. And uh, early on, it was suspected that probably Gold Apollo was hacked. And uh, there was a physical infiltration, either during the time it was manufactured or during the time it was shipped. Uh, however, the CEO of Gold Apollo has come out only in the last few hours and actually said, and this is also something which a lot of people don't really realize, that the pagers only had the brand of Gold Apollo, which was mentioned, while it was actually contracting a Budapest-based company called Back Producers. And they are the ones who actually were producing the actual pagers. And therefore, Gold Apollo is basically saying that, look, while it had our brand and we gave the guidelines on how do you go ahead and build that particular pager, but the actual manufacturing was happening in Budapest. And uh, they say that that is the reason we have not been hacked. It's another company which we were contracting. So it's basically not even the third party here. It's the third party of the third party, what is generally called as the fourth party, which is being hacked uh, while sourcing these pagers. So that's what 
as of now seems like to have happened. And this was a physical infiltration uh, for sure on how they've been able to tamper with the devices uh, in, in, in making the explosions happen. I'm happy and to it's set off by a code, right? It's set off by a, a digital emission. Well, yes, because there definitely has to be a detonation that happens based on uh, a trigger. And the trigger in this case seems to be a message. But it is no different, right? When you get a message on your mobile phone and uh, you get a pop-up saying you've received a message, what's really happening? Over the air, there is some packets which have been delivered to your phone and your phone is programmed to act in a certain way the moment it gets a particular signal. This is no different. However, the genius here and the the only reason I call it genius is because these attacks have not been very popular. And the first time we are seeing some of these at this scale is uh, that this was actually done at a firmware level, at a level where uh, it would be used in, at mass of both first physically tampering the device and then doing an over-the-air update using which the actual incident has took place. John, how does this change warfare? Well, it's just uh, an expansion of, uh, you know, espionage. I mean, we've uh, seen small-scale, you know, attacks uh, and assassinations uh, over the years, but this is, has to be the largest scale uh, of intelligence operation uh, in memory uh, that uh, turned uh, these uh, pagers into uh, bombs. It's ingenious. Um, I just uh, see it's just an unconventional warfare. In fact, Glenn, would you like to add to that? Because presumably, I mean, it is a fact now, it seems, that there were explosives within these uh, walkie-talkies and pagers. The explosives themselves were evidently not detected at all, uh, either through uh, you know, security checks or at any level. All of them got transferred over there. Apparently, the amount of explosives absolutely tiny integrated into some sort of a chipboard uh, triggered by uh, a lithium-ion battery and some sort of code which was sent in. It's an extremely sophisticated operation, and it all happened simultaneously. It is. Uh, uh, two points, I think, come to mind. Uh, years ago, when I was uh, tangentially involved in the cyber threats uh, to uh, our allies in the United States, the, I was involved in an effort by the U.S. government um, and allies to try to, to come to grips with what the, how extensive the threats were and what could be done about them. And the conclusion then was and remains now that for a cyber kind of um, attack, there is actually almost no defense. The only defense uh, is to have a, a strong offensive capability oneself. And then like with the nuclear uh, uh, universe, one reaches a uh, mutually assured destruction um, parity, and so all sides uh, fear the consequences of taking aggressive action. But one cannot stop uh, this um, kind of operation really very effectively uh, f when conducted by a competent intelligence uh, service. Uh, the second thing is that this um, it takes very little um, uh, mass of explosive to have absolutely devastating uh, consequences. I've, I have seen uh, letter bombs exploded with, I don't know what the exact weight was, but uh, think of uh, a third of a uh, piece of bubble gum, a minuscule amount, and one can destroy uh, an, an office with that. So the uh, consequences of these uh, operations can be huge, and uh, they're hard to any kind of cyber operation ultimately is very difficult to stop uh, if one wishes to engage in it. Um, John, it just strikes me that, you know, if the Israelis have done it now, then, you know, militaries around the world uh, would be looking to acquire this technology. And, and, you know, the question I was asking you earlier on, does this not have the potential of transforming warfare? If electronic, if cyber attacks translate into physical attacks in a form that we've not seen before, that too at scale, does this not change everything, the entire paradigm of warfare? What if, for example, this kind of technology was introduced between Ukraine and Russia? Well, it definitely could, uh, you know, do some uh, damage, especially, say, if uh, either side were to get hold of uh, 
the communications devices of uh, the leadership. I mean, imagine, say, if uh, the uh, Ukrainians hacked Vladimir Putin's uh, cell phone. I mean, there's a lot of uh, talk going on now about will, say, the Chinese, in the case of a war with the U.S., uh, look to the Israelis as a uh, way to, uh, for inspiration, rather, as to what to do against the United States. So I think that, yes, we've uh, turned a corner in terms of uh, overt warfare. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us. The latest news is that nine people at least are dead, 300 injured in attacks taking place uh, across Lebanon with walkie-talkies exploding. This time last evening, we were talking about pagers exploding. Uh, what are the implications of this? Uh, perhaps we all need to be worried about what might happen next in West Asia, which is so very unpredictable and volatile at this stage. Thank you, gentlemen, very much for being with us.